Isaiah 55.1 commands the one who has no money to come buy and eat. But how can a man with no money buy anything? Today, I will answer that question as I look at how the book of Isaiah predicts the gospel of Jesus. The following clip is an excerpt from my weekly Bible study. If you like what you see, stay tuned to learn how you can join in the next study. So as I noted earlier, one of the themes of today's readings is food. In the gospel, we saw Jesus miraculously feeding 5,000 men with a small amount of food. Psalmist too spoke of how God meets one's material needs. Isaiah draws upon similar imagery, but with a purely spiritual message. The chapter opens with a series of imperatives which create a sense of urgency, all from the lips of God. Come to the waters. Come by and eat. Come by and drink. Water has rich symbolism in Isaiah, being associated with the Spirit of God. For example, here in 44.3 we read, For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. There's kind of a, a parallelism here that the, the first mm -hmm. line and the second line are saying the same thing. That water is symbolic of the spirit and the dry ground is symbolic of descendants. Jesus will later use similar imagery in John 4 when talking to the woman at the well and John 7 at the temple. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And we ourselves cry out with the woman, Sir, give me this water. Lord, give us your spirit so that we may have in you eternal life. He who has no money, come buy and eat. How can one with no money buy food? He can't. But what if another has already paid the price? Salvation is not free. Indeed, the price is quite great. But God himself has paid it, paid it on the cross of Jesus. From earlier in Isaiah here, in the 25th chapter, On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. He will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. The veil has been lifted. On the hill of Calvary, death was defeated. The feast has begun. We eagerly await for its ultimate fulfillment in the here and now, at the end of days. We know the joy to come, and yet we still spend our money on that which is not bread, and labor for that which does not satisfy. We seek the vain pleasures life has to offer, but these are not bread. They cannot satisfy. Listen diligently here is actually, listen, listen, a strong cry to hear the Lord speak. Eat what is good, the food without cost, not the junk the world has to offer, whose price is high indeed. Hear that your soul may live. The words translated yourself in verse 2 and translated your soul in verse 3 are the same. In both cases, it refers to the inner self, the core of one's being. We could thus translate verse 2, Delight your soul on rich food. Feed yourself on the free gift of salvation, the richest gift of all. Incline your ear and come to me. The response is deliberate. Salvation is a gift, but a gift we must actively accept. It is our choice whether we come to God and his feast, or instead partake in the feast, which is really a famine, the world has to offer. The passage then speaks of an everlasting covenant, but it is associated not with Moses, as might be most natural, but with David. The you here is plural. It does not refer to David or some David-like figure, but to those partaking in the feast, that is us. The temporal Mosaic covenant has been broken, but the eternal one, the Messianic covenant, can never be broken. 
God does not make this covenant with Moses or David, but with us. Behold here marks a shift in the emphasis as the feast imagery begins to fade away. The behold in verse 5 ties verses 4 and 5 together. I made him a witness to the peoples, which seemed to refer to the historic David, although it's an odd choice of words for the king, as nowhere else in scripture is he described as a witness. The next verse, however, shifts from the third person to the second person. The you is singular here. This all suggests that the referent has changed. It's no longer the feast goers or David, but rather the main subject of the multiple chapter long monologue. That is none other than the servant, the figure who takes on the sins of the world in Isaiah 53, Jesus Christ himself. David has changed to the new David. The witness of Israel is now the joy of all people. Through this new David, a nation that you do not know will be called. That is, the covenant will no longer be with Israel alone, but with the Gentiles, that is, with all of us. The prophecy has been fulfilled. The nation that Jesus did not know has run to him. The hope of the opening chapters of Hosea has been realized. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of mountains, and shall be lifted up above the hills, and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob. And all this has been done for the glory of God. When God calls us and we respond, it brings him glory. That is how valuable we are in the sight of God. We are not slaves made to serve him, nor is he a genie there to serve us. But rather we are family, called to live in relation as we partake in the feast that money cannot buy. Each week I conduct an interactive Bible study over on the Reasoned Worship channel. We read through four passages, and everyone is encouraged to bring their own insights. Then I present a prepared teaching on one of the four and open it up to further discussion. The readings are announced in advance if you want to prepare, or just come and let the Spirit lead you. Click here to see when the next study happens. I hope to see you there.